quarter. Um, I think we'll take it straight into questions. Jacob, do you want to start us off? Yeah, Caleb, obviously they can sit back after that first goal. Is this kind of a game that I don't know much you change other than when they sit back like that, it kind of requires you to be perfect at one touch passes. Is it just kind of missing that final pass tonight? Yeah, I thought we did much better in the second half. Um, I think the chances are there, actually, if you rewatch it. And, you know, obviously we'll see all the analytics. We'll look at all the positions we got in. We'll look at all the chances and how we could do better. Um, I think it was like 19 to 6 in shots. Right. And it, it just felt like second half that we um, got in great spots to be able to score. And even a couple times early in the first half, um, I think it's a frustrating game because it played out exactly the way they wanted it to play out. And we've seen them do that time and again on the road. Um, and they're, they're the best in the league at sitting in a low block and making life difficult. And that's why they had 17 draws last year. And um, you have to give a lot of credit to Nashville for pulling out a smash and grab three points on the road when they gave up 19 shots and only had six themselves. And, you know, that's the exact game we knew we were going to get. They had lost two in a row. Their, their backs were against the wall. We knew they would sit in, try to pinch a goal somehow off a counter or set piece or, you know, a, uh, you know, a cross. Um, they found that goal early, thought it was very unlucky. Pedro slipped. If he doesn't slip, I don't think they score. Um, you know, but we got to look at how we gave up the service. And um, now they can sit in the entire game. And you saw second half, they're very good at just kind of killing the game and slowing the tempo and, and finding a way to get three points. Um, ugly. And you got you to gotta give credit to them. And, and it's not the first time they've done that. Um, you know, I. I with my group, I got to look at a little bit, you know, early in the game, I thought some guys in the front three were a little sloppy. Those spaces are tight and they're a physical team, they're an organized team. But I thought when we played in between the lines to the wingers to the nine, you know, we weren't very clean. I didn't think our movement in our front three was very good. Um, I thought the game changed a little bit. We made a few subs, we were able to kind of Playing to Miggy a little bit more and link up central um, with some combination play. I thought our movement, our wingers was a bit better behind the line, which opened up pockets. And that's why I thought we played a lot better in the second half and created a lot more chances. Um, again, I don't know how we don't find at least one goal, but the bottom line is we just, we have to be better. We have to look at it and figure out why we didn't score a goal. And obviously look at Personnel as well, you know, because we gave a few different guys an opportunity, um, you know, and so we got to figure out now, okay, where do we go from here? Personnel, how could we be better in, you know, scoring goals and not giving away a goal? Um, but but I think by and large, you said it. Um, we dominated the game, but we have nothing to show for it. And I think the most disappointing thing is we had a packed crowd. And we sent them home um, with a loss and no goals. And that's not good enough. You know, we want to score goals here. We want to leave them going home with three points. And, and you know, they were, they were awesome today, the supporters. And they showed up and, you know, we didn't get it done. So we have to now go on the road and, and you know, just like they did, backs against the wall now and go and get three points against Philly on the road now. The way you guys played in that second half, is that more of the idea you wanted your team to play before Nashville got that goal because it? Yeah, I, I thought our, our front three again just didn't do a good enough job at times of running behind the line. You know, for instance, when Pedro or Steven got the ball, um, you know, our wingers, instead of running behind the wing back to now clear it out for, say, Lucas to come in, um, they, they were really just kind of clogging um, the play and playing in front of their back three, back five, and their two holders. And 
It was too easy. There wasn't enough movement behind the line. You know, in the second half, that was the big adjustment, and I thought, you know, open the game up, and we were able to find much more. Uh, we were able to find much better positions, and I do think playing, you know, Miggy's a bit better hold-up guy. You know, Giassi in a game where it's really tight, he's got to play back to goal. There's no space to run behind the line. You know, they're they're going to have five guys in the box when there's a cross. It's a difficult game for him. You know, so. I think when they score that goal, the game changes a lot. Now a guy like Luis Diaz, a guy like Jossi, um, and even Derek at times, not quite as effective in that type of, type of game. That's where like when Yao came in, um, when Miggy came in, they're a bit better in tight spaces. They're a bit more technical, and I thought, you know, our our chance creation changed. But a lot of it just had to do with obviously the space and um, what the game was giving us, and so. That adjustment were just disappointed we didn't find the goal. And frankly, I don't I don't know how we didn't. You know? So I, I thought we played really well in the second half. Yeah. Really well. And sometimes you play really well and you don't find the goal. Yeah. But we gave them nothing in the second half and we created a ton of chances so we can we can certainly build on that. Thanks for the time, Coach. Um, in the first half it looked like after uh, no whistles were being called, a lot of folks in the crew were getting frustrated on the field. They looked a little angry whenever they weren't hearing a whistle. Do you think that kind of fed into the frustration that Nashville was hoping for in this in this match? Yeah, I mean, again, I think they're very good at going on the road and, and mm -hmm. kind of making the game chippy and, and choppy and, and, you know, disrupt your rhythm and um, slow the game, you know, make it really slow. And um, it, it, it's exactly what we thought we were going to get. So, you know, I think the thing that really, for me, made life really difficult for us was giving up that goal. You know, I, I think if, it, if the game stays 0-0, we're going to eventually open them up. And they can't be quite as compact. Um, you know, but up a goal now, they, they had no interest in trying to create chances or score goals. Um, I don't even know if they had. Maybe they had a shot in the second half, a couple maybe. But they had six total for the game, and, and we had 19. So. And we had, we had like 67% possession. So it's, it's one of those games that, yeah, you just don't want to be in that game down a goal. You know, so we, we just have to do better not giving up the goal and being sharper. And, you know, and then obviously we'll always look at how we can create better chances. I'll look at myself as well and, and look at my decisions and, you know, some of the information I gave and, you know, see if, see if I can't find a different way to get the guys to play better. On the defense also, um, early in the match, off that Milos deflection, it was a tackle, it turned into Nashville's first real chance in the match. Uh, had played really well after that, a lot of big tackles Milos gave, but I noticed uh, Mensa and Milos were talking a lot whenever there was downtime in the match on a whistle or a foul. Or, and then after the match, I noticed Aloy was talking with Milos also. What are you seeing on the defense communication-wise? Is there still room for growth, or what are those kind of conversations that they're having to kind of improve for the future? Yeah, you know, I thought they played well, the back line today. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Pedro slipped on the goal. Um, yeah, can we do better than I give up the cross? Um, but I, I thought they played really well today. And that's a very good attacking group with Leal and Mukhtar and Sapong. Those guys are very good. I mean, this, this is a, a team the last two years that has been one of the best teams in the East. Um, and I thought we did a pretty good job of, you know, kind of stopping their transitions and um, you know, I, I don't think we fell short today because of necessarily the communication or the chemistry with our back line. I think, I think we were pretty solid there. And, and again, I thought we had enough chances. You know, it just wasn't our day in terms of finding that little bit of quality on the finish. Um, but we got in great spots. The goalkeeper also, you got to give him credit, had a couple great saves. And, and the amount of crosses and shots that they blocked as well. Again, you'll look at that, but I, I mean, that's, they were unbelievable in the box defending. Um, but I looked at one point, there was literally 10 guys, 11 with the goalkeeper, inside the 18 yard box. Mm -hmm. And it, it's difficult. It's extremely difficult. Um, you know, but I didn't think we struggled to create chances in that second half. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Coach. Yep.